I'm going to just jump into kind of navigate architecture now and kind of go through some of those tools. Um, the kind of the main draw from navigate architecture for me initially was actually the the rooms drawing tool. So in navigate architecture, you kind of you get tools that are very specific to architects. So um, the rooms drawing tool was really what drew me to the software in the first place. And what that allows you to do is automate the creation of your room data sheets. Um, we all know on large projects that you could, if you had 50 rooms, you could probably spend two or three days just setting up the, the bare using sheets before you even start to actually put the relevant information in there. Um, so what Navigate lets you do is kind of automate that. Now, I've kind of learned a few things from testing this tool out. Um, the first one being, uh, if you have linked models, I would suggest turning them off or allowing yourself more time to run the tool because it will take longer. Um, you need to make sure you have a view template made for every view, and you also need to make sure that the volume of your room is pulled up to the soffit of the slab, otherwise uh, you will end up having to remake your elevations again. So. I'm going to just create like three rooms really quickly to um, to demonstrate that. So I'm going to do those three rooms kind of down here. So I know myself there, 121, 123, and 122. Um, so I've selected my rooms that I want to create my room data sheets for. And then as I move over here, then I'm going to pick what things that I want for my room data sheet. So obviously I want um, to create elevations and sections. Um, and I want to just focus on the main four walls of the room. So by doing that, if you had small nib walls or the room had a corner or something awkward, you could choose to ignore that shorter wall and it won't make extra wall elevations that you don't necessarily need. Um, that's my view template. So I'm going to go one is to 50. And I'm going to create a floor plan, create a ceiling plan, and create a 3D view all at the same scale. <coughs> and I also want to create the sheets, and I want to place those views on the sheets. So I'm selecting my A1 title block, and I want to draw numbers to start at 1500. And that's where I want to um, file them in my, in my project browser to keep things organized. Um, so... I mean, it's quite a it's quite a simple interface. It lets you pick what you want to create or don't want to create. Um, but you do. I did come across one glitch in it is if you don't have a view template made for something, the create button actually will stay grayed out. So that's important to remember. Um, so, uh, so what you don't see is there's a little toolbar running on my other screen that's just processing that in the background, and that should just take a couple of seconds. Yeah, um, we've, we've a good few customers who are using this, uh, like Deborah, just to for that room data sheet um, mm -hmm. feature alone. Yeah. So that's just placing the views on the sheets now. So yeah, as I said, while that's running, what I have found in testing this is if you have a lot of linked models in there or it's a particularly large model, I would say run it over lunch, run it overnight, run it while you're in a meeting. Um, it will take that bit longer. There's, there's nothing in this model, really. There's no links. It's a very simple model. Um, so just do allow yourself just a little bit more time. Um, so I have that has finished running. And if I go down here, there's my, um, my 1500 series that's been created. So I'm going to show you now what happens if uh, you set your rooms up correctly or incorrectly. Um, so there's my cafeteria. Um, There's my uh, elevations, which is specifically want to, you can see here, I've made sure that my room is pulled up to the soffit of the slab on the next floor because that's the extent of my elevation that I want to see. Um, if I go to the next room, which I've, I've deliberately um, caused an issue with, you can see here, I didn't check my room volume was pulled up. So you do need to be aware that you have pulled up your room volume 
otherwise um, your elevations won't generate properly. So it is a matter of making sure you do one and you get one right. Um, and again, I haven't pulled up my room volume in this one either. But um, it's, as you can see, you can delete the views and you can fix it and you can you can run it again and you have your room set back up in a, in a matter of minutes. So it's not the end of the world if you've forgotten to, to pull your room volumes up, but it's something to just make sure that you've done in advance. Otherwise, uh, you will open your sheet and you'll be annoyed at yourself because you didn't pull your room volume up. So it's just one of those things to, um, yeah, to you, check and you be aware of. What you had done there as well, Deborah, is you, you ran a section through the building just as a sanity yeah. check. Just to I did, yeah. Showcase. yeah. I did. So I have a section run through the building here. Um, and I can go and see that. And I have my rooms turned on in my section. And, yeah, this was the room that I deliberately pulled down. And, you know, all the rest of them are, you can see that. Revit always seems to put in rooms at that exact default height. Um so it's a matter of making sure your rooms are pulled up to where they need to go so that you get your elevations out because you want to minimize the amount of you know mundane kind of checking and fixing that you have to do because you want to get into the actual meat of the drawn um so that's like the room data sheets tool